All right, hey guys, I want to address a couple of questions I'm getting um, that I'm hearing. And so I want you to understand something. Part of the reason why I want you talking is if you are talking, I can listen in on your conversations and realize where some people have misunderstandings, and then I can talk about it as a class. If you're not talking, can I figure out where you're having trouble? No. no. Talking is good. One, it helps you learn from each other. That's why you talk to each other first, because I have had some questions asked of me that I know people at that group could have answered. Okay? Now, one of the questions that just came up is, is it X and then Y? Yes. And the answer is? Yes. yes. Does anyone know why? Because I don't know how the alphabet goes. Okay. Legitimately, it's just in alphabetical order. So if you ever struggle with that, keep it in mind, it's in alphabetical order. That's it. We good with that idea? Okay. And then, in general, would you think going to the right is positive or going to the left is positive? To the right. To the right. That's why this is the positive part of the x-axis. This is the negative. negative. Would going up be positive or going down be positive? Uh, up is positive. So this is the positive part of the y-axis and this is the negative part. These are basics that are really important that you need to understand. So if I were to graph negative 2, 3, I start at the origin, remember that's always 0, 0. Where am I going to go from there? Negative 2, over so 2. Over, two. Which, which way over? Two. To the left, 2, and then up 3. There is a point, then what's the next one? Negative 1. So to the left, 1. And up one. And then zero negative one. Do I go to the left or right? Stay up there and then go up. Remember, x is x is zero. So am I going to the left or right? No. You stay in there. And then I'm going down one. Notice what shape do those three points make? They make a line, okay? That is a linear shape right there. And so what is a fourth point? Uh, what's Are we like making this up or not? Give me any fourth, give me another point up here. Negative uh, three and four. What was it? Negative six. Negative three and four. Negative three and one, two, three, four. Do you all agree? Yeah. Negative three. Five. Negative three five is what that point should be. Give me another one. One negative three. One and negative three. Not one and negative four. Not two and negative four. Should be two what? Okay, let me ask this then. Um, who's a good person to ask? Brandon, what's the pattern happening with these points? I mean, there is a linear shape, but what's the... It is a constant rate of change to taken out from one class, but what is the pattern? How would we describe what is happening? Uh, up two, over one, to the left. Could we say going up two to the left one? Or, is that happening every time? Or over one. To the, up two to the yeah. left one. Is that happening every time? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So could I continue to go up two and to the left one? Yes. So up two to the left one. Notice that gives me negative four comma seven. We've got to be careful. Is there another direction that I could be going? Yes. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Down one. So down one and to the right two, does that look the same? No, down two to the right one. Oh. If I go down two to the right one, does that keep it going? Yeah. Can I do that again? Yes? Okay, so what is the method to finding the point? It's either, either up two and then what? To the left one. Up two to the left one. Or down two. 
and to the right to the right one. And I've heard some people already saying it. What is that thing called when we go up and to the left? Slope. Slope. That's known as our slope. Okay. Have we all at least heard about slope before? Not sadly. Did y'all look at slope in middle school? Yes. N does equal slope. We're going to learn more about that. Okay. So hopefully we can do this next part pretty quickly. Okay. So here's the thing. Now we only have two points. So I'm going to graph my two points. Two, one. There it is. And five, two. So how would I find another point? I've got two, one. I've got five, two. Find the slope of that. Find the slope of that. What is the slope of that? Uh, up one, up three. So up one, you said over three. What do you I mean to the right. Okay. You, Kelsey's happy before. She's heard me say this a lot. Can you just say over? Why not? Because you don't know which side. Don't know you don't know whether it's right or left. You've got to be clear with your language. It goes up one and then to the right three. So what could I continue to do? Up one. Up one. To the right three. Up one to the right three. Does it look like those points are following a line? Yeah? Gabe, is there another direction I could have gone? Any ideas? So I went up one to the right three, but I ran out of room. Is there another way I could have gone? So if I go down one and to the left three, does that keep the same shape? Down one. To the left three. Does that make sense? I think, yes. Yes? Yes. Yeah, you see it? Okay. So we've got those points in there. Could I go, this is an important question, could I go down two and to the left one, two, three, four, five, six? Yeah. Yes. I mean, actually, I don't know. I mean, does it look like it's in the same shape? Oh, wait, yes, yes. Yeah. So why does that work? Because it's still part of the line. It's still part of the line, yes, but what did I really do? I just... You multiply by two. I just multiply both of them by two. Is that legal? Yes. Yes. And so I want you to notice, could I triple it? Yeah. Yes, right? As long as I'm keeping that ratio. The ratio being one to three. This is important about slope. It's all about ratios, okay? As long as you keep that ratio, you're good. Make sense? Okay. At this point, and if you had me last year, you already know this for sure. Make sure you help your group. I want you to look at these points in the table. Because first off, I want to say, do we all know how to find slope in a graph? Because we've done that before. Yeah. Rise divided by run. 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 We heard that language, didn't we? Yeah. Okay. Be careful. I want us to be careful about this. I know we're super used to saying over. Does the word over mean anything in math? No. I guess not. It's not? I guess not. Look, this is a mathematical symbol right here. What is that symbol? Divided. divided by. Rise divided by run. No, no, no. It's not easier. You're used to saying that is not mathematically accurate, and that's part of the reason why we end up struggling, because, and not this particular one, but legitimately, if you struggle with some aspects of math, a lot of times it's because we have a misunderstanding. How many of us thought solution meant answer before our first unit? The uh, thinking that solution means answer will mess you up for the rest of high school math. That's why I spent so much time on it. What is a solution? So it's a value or values that make a mathematical statement true, right? You got to know that. That's very different than just the answer because your answer can be wrong. A solution cannot. If you found the solution, it makes the equation true. So here's the thing. We already know how to find slope in a graph, correct? A lot of times it's much easier to find slope in a table. Explore these tables. Try to find a pattern. Um, look at the pattern with the x values and then look to see if there's a pattern with the y values. Go. With the tables. Look at the points in the table. What patterns do you see with the 
x values, what do you see with the y values? Talk about it in your groups. Just look for the patterns in the x and look for the patterns in the y. Let's talk about it. Let's look at the patterns. I know you already know it, Kelsey. So just wait a second. And then talk about it with your group. See any patterns? Mm -hmm. In the table? Look at the X in the table. Does you see anything happening there in the X? Look, keep looking. Keep looking. So right here you're seeing that it's adding one each time and adding one each time? Okay. No, that's fine. That's all I'm looking for. There's a pattern in the table. Look at it in the other two tables. Y is going up by 1 and the X is going up by 3. Is that a pattern? I hear the share of ideas. I don't see any of the have we got the pattern in those tables? Come on, look at the tables. Come on, look at the tables. Come on, is there a pattern? Alright, I'm not going to waste other people's time. If you want to try to learn, start talking about it. So what do you see in that last one? And on the Y? I mean, I know part what about the other two? That was a couple. Are they adding ones on the first one? Yeah. Both to the X and Y, just the X, just the Y. Both? Look at the X and the Y. So adding one every time. Huh? You can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to talk about it. Okay. So there's a few things I want to talk about with this. Looking at our points in the table. All right. Jalen, what's happening here to our Y's? Adding one. Adding one every time? Yeah. Okay. Kelsey, what's happening to our X's? Uh, adding one. Adding one every time. No. Hey, I got a quick question for all of you because this came up last unit. Um, what are we repeatedly doing? Adding. Adding. So, what could we possibly mathematically do to represent repeated addition? We could have some kind of multiplication here. We're going to get into that. Um, I believe that y'all already talked about in middle school, and I know if you had algebra one already, you definitely talked about this. The slope-intercept form of a line. Does that sound familiar? That's y equals. M plus X plus B. B. Hey, what's happening? What's happening between the M and the X? Oh, because multiplication is repeated addition. All of these ideas connect with each other, and that's important. Okay. Hey, by the way, did anyone see a one earlier today? Or actually, I think it was yesterday that we looked at going up one. And to the right one. Yeah, number one. Wasn't that number one? Okay. Hey, could, so I want you to notice, can we see the up one and to the right one within the table? Yeah. Yes. And this can actually be more useful, and we'll look at it a little bit more in a second. Okay, so going from there, uh, Ren, what did you notice for the Y in the second table? You didn't notice anything? Oh, no, you all focused on the third one, didn't you? Yeah. Okay, so I'll get to that in a second. Hold on. Um... Jordan, what did y'all say for the second one? X goes up by one and Y goes down by two. So X goes up by one and Y goes down by two. Hey, is that what we saw in number two with the slope? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we're starting to see that we can see the slope in our table as well. Okay, so Brooke, I want you to share with us what y'all said about X here, what you wrote about X. Um, goes up by three. Okay.
And what did you say for the Y? Okay. Here's something I want you all to hear. Here's something I want you to hear very clearly from me. Yes, I understand why we're saying it this way, but I want you to think about something. X. Does X go up and down? No. It goes sideways, so horizontally? So what would be a more accurate way to say this? If we're going from 2 to 5 to 8, it's going to the right. It's going to the right, isn't it? Because think about it, if we're talking about the X, if you're talking about X, are you, if it's positive, are you going to the right or are you going to the left? To the right. If it's positive, it's going over to the right, correct? So we can say going goes right by 3, which is important. Listen very clearly on this. Because if it's going to the right, is that my rise or my run? Running. That's my run. When we talk about the X, isn't that where we find the run? Yeah. Yes? Makes sense? Anton, you good with that? So we want to recognize that the rise goes along with our X values. Nope, not rise. I totally wrote down the wrong spot. The run, <laughs> sorry, goes along with our X values. What goes with our rise? rise. The Y. So without even looking at the graph, I could look at this table. It's going up by one every time, so what's my rise? One. What's my run? Three, three. Goes to the right by three. Why are they both positive? Because it goes up. It goes up, which is positive, and it goes to the right, which is positive. Okay. Slope is very easy to find in a table. Does that make sense? Is that what we see up here? Yeah. Yeah. Now I do want to point this out because this is a little odd. We did go down one and down three, or to the left three. Is that the same thing? No. Yeah, it's up here. Down 1 divided by to the left 3. If you do negative 1 divided by negative 3 in the calculator, what do you get? Put negative 1 divided by negative 3. Oh, 1 divided by 3. Was it positive or negative? Oh, so is negative 1 divided by negative 3 the same thing as positive 1 third? Yes. Okay. It is the same slope. It's just going in the opposite direction. Does that make sense? We good? Any questions? Go once. Go twice. Okay. So, so here's what I want you to notice, and this is where we started to get into some mathematical vocabulary. Look at the next page. In mathematics, we see the concept of values changing all the time. We use a symbol to signify the change in some value. The symbol is the Greek letter delta. Any sign, time you see this triangle, that is the Greek letter delta. But what it means, the change in. If you see that Greek letter delta, this is shorthand to just mean the change in. You need to be aware of that. Notice how it next says when we see our x value is changing, we call that our change in x or delta x. So delta x is the what? I heard someone start to say it. The change in x. So what do we mean by delta y? Change in y. The change in y. Okay? So knowing that the slope is rise divided by run. Should we put delta y or delta x in the numerator? Delta x. Delta y. Delta x. Why? Delta x. But why? Well, you said delta y, right? You don't know? I did it again. So why are you not fighting for it if you just guess it? Because y is the rise. Is y the rise? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Say again. Can we change just, but it's not just we use it more, most commonly with x and y. But if you just see delta ever, it means change in. Anytime you see that Greek letter delta, it means change. It's used in lots of math and science context. And sorority has. Okay, but I don't care about that right now. I care about the math. And so we've already talked about this. Right? When we looked at these tables, these are the same exact tables that we just looked at. I need you taking these notes so you can use this later. What was the change in my x? Oh, oh, nice. So plus 1. So the change in x was 1. What was the change in y? For the second one? Subtracting 2. Yes, sir. And so delta y would be? Negative 2. So if I'm calculating slope, it's going to be negative 2 divided by 1, which is? Delta negative 2. Which is negative 2 divided by 1, which is? Oh. Negative 2. Thank you. It's negative 2. And Josh is not like super brilliant. I mean, I'm sure he is. But no, no. What did you do, Josh? Use your what? He used a what? A calculator. I'm not saying that he's not smart. What I'm saying is he didn't have to know rocket science to get that right. He picked up a calculator. Sorry, Josh, I said that the wrong way. What I was trying to say is you don't have to be a genius to pick up a calculator and do negative 2 divided by 1. Some of us did, but most of us did not. But I also want to point this out. Y'all are looking at me crazy when I ask you to do negative 2 divided by 1. But can you put negative 2 over 1 in the calculator? No, you can put division into a calculator. Okay? So, what's the change in y here? Plus 1. What's the change in y here? Plus 3. Okay, now I want to point this out. We already know that the slope is what for this one? One third. One third. Could I look at all three of these at the same time? Because I've added one how many times? Three. Three, three so that would be plus what? Three. three. This would be a total of plus nine. Is that going to change my slope? No. no. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. No. 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 How can we check? No. Um, oh, delta x. Yeah. Well, delta x is plus nine. How do I calculate slope though? Delta x divided by delta x. Delta y. Okay. Divided by delta x. Okay. So what is my delta y? Uh, three. three. And then nine. Divided by nine. nine is three. three. Zero. How about you put it in the calculator? Yeah. The calculator simplifies it for you. Now be careful because you got to put it in the right order. It's 3 divided by 9. So did it give us the same slope? No. Yes. It's 1 divided by 3. Yes. Is that the same slope? Yes. Okay. So I want you. All right. I want you to do the you try work within your small groups to look at. There's example one given there, but I want you to work on the you try section with your small group. Okay. There's an example one at the bottom. Move to the you try on the next page. You try. Yep. You try.